Father, we come before you and we ask that you will go before us as we continue to unravel these seeming contradictions that um, many have struggled over. And even for some of us in the past, we would have struggled with some and some we didn't even realize existed as what we'd call a seeming contradiction. So bless the time now as we continue to look at more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, these days you notice that I'm doing them one-one because the truth is that they end up um, being a little lengthy themselves. So, it's just to, you know, take them one at a time. So, this evening's issue is entitled, or the question is, did Jesus allow his disciples to take a staff on their journey or not? Did he allow his disciples to take a staff on their journey or not? For in Mark 6, as usual, we'll read the passages after. Just look at the statements first. In Mark 6, it would seem like Jesus allowed them to carry a staff. But in Matthew and in Luke, it would seem like Jesus disallowed them to carry a staff. Before we look at the passages, I want you to, when we look at them, to be looking at them carefully. But you know, Sister Grace mentioned it in her prayer, and, and I'm just so grateful for this. This series that we're doing simply because... For me, I am learning so much. Even, and I'm going to share with you what I you know, caution us to do, having looked at these seeming contradictions. I'm learning that we cannot just take everything at face value, especially, for instance, the Gospels. So in other words, let me, let me get more clearer. What we're going to look at, for instance, in Mark 6, you're going to see Jesus says that they mustn't carry anything except a staff. And then the Matthew and the Luke says, don't carry anything, no staves, no staves, anything. And I'm saying that what I'm learning about this kind of series is that we need to know the whole counsel of the word of God. Because if we rest on Matthew and Luke and we're telling the story, preaching, teaching, you name it. We're in Sunday school and we're teaching the children or the adults and so forth. If we only know Matthew and Luke and don't know Mark. We're going to give the wrong impression or an inaccurate lesson. Am I making sense? So if we only know one side of the story, for us, we're going to tell it like it is <laughs> and not realizing that there's another side, yes, that needs to reconcile. So for me, it makes me even more cautious these days to say, all right, especially if I read the Gospels, to say, all right, I'm just reading in Matthew. I'm just making up something now. You know, I'm just making up something. I'm just reading in Matthew that Jesus wept. And that's all I know. So I'm going to tell it that Jesus wept. But if there could be in Luke that says Jesus didn't cry. That's what I'm saying. So how will you know if Jesus didn't cry if you don't read Luke and so forth? So this is what it is doing for me. It is making me, when I study now, whether a sermon or a, you know Bible study or whatever, I'm reading and I'm saying, let me see what the comparisons are what the scripture says because then it will help us to bring out what i call the the, the, the entire situation because it is of simply put a lot of these seeming contradictions are just simply put um author's perspective for instance one author tells their story from what they saw and one says i see one then another says i see two i saw one one says i saw two so if we only read the one that says they see one and just bring it off as gospel and say they own, there was only one person at the tomb and you stick with that you're going to be inaccurate am i making sense for me this just makes it more diligent to study the whole counsel of the word because if you pass it off as gospel and mandate it to say that only one person was at the tomb eh? but then other other passages or other gospels are saying no they were really two or three or four and so forth so really i'm hoping that you're realizing that we need to dig into scripture amen so let's read mark 6 verse 7 to 9 and the, the context there says it um, that Jesus allowed them to carry a staff. So they were going on a journey. Jesus is preparing to send them off two by two. And he gives them these instructions starting at verse 7 of Mark 6. And the scripture says, And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey save a staff only 
All right, somebody just shout it out, clarify for me. The old King James says, save a staff only. What does, give me another word for the word save. Except, all right? So it can be reread that Jesus says, and he commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey except a staff only. No script, no bread, no money in their purse, you know, but be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. Now, let me, some of these words are going to be repeated in the other passages. So, I might as well let me just um, define it from here and know. So, he, the others can be easily, you know, no bread, meaning don't take any food with you. No money, don't take any money with you. But some words are used here, script and purse. They, these are not the same words. A script back in those days was like a leather bag or sometimes made of um, not just animal skin but tough coarse material it's like their knapsack in the days all right usually they wore it around their neck but it's like a leather bag or a leather pouch that they would have their belongings in their clothes and so forth so he says don't take any bag with you and and don't put any money in your purse all right? don't take any money in your purse and the purse by the way would be like a wallet all right so the bag would be like their, their, their knapsack and, and, and a traveling bag and so forth. All right? So let's now look. You're seeing it very clearly. He says, don't take anything except a staff. All right? But then Matthew and Luke seems to disallow that. Jesus seems to disallow them carrying a staff. And so Matthew 10, reading from verses 5 to 10 says, pay attention to the details, by the way. It says, verse 5, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Matthew does a good job, by the way, of setting the, 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 the what, what I'd call the, the background information that wasn't in the others. All right? Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand he says heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received freely give provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses meaning money then it continues with the same vein here do not provide nor script don't provide script for your journey neither two coats neither shoes nor yet staves. Staves is plural for staff. One staff, two staves. All right? For the workman is worthy of his meat. So right here we're seeing where he tells them not to provide anything for themselves, including staff. All right? Let's look at Luke 9, 1 to 3, and then I'll give opportunity for the scholars of Hillsview, meaning that's any one of you, by the way, all right? <laughs> to, to bring in what you think is going on here to reconcile this. And of course, as usual, after that, we will um, share the slides I have. Luke 9, 1 to 3 says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey all right take nothing for your journey i like how luke puts this one uh, take nothing for your journey neither staves nor script neither bread neither money neither have two coats a piece and whatever house you enter into there abide and thence depart and i'll just read verse 5 and stop there and whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them um brother omar oh, you have a mic there already mic over this side no i was just asking omar to oh, mic over that side too all right so we have read who has any take on reconciling this seeming contradiction you know, in Mark, it seems like he allows for it except a staff. He says, take everything, ex take nothing except a staff. But then in Matthew, he says, don't take anything, <laughs> including staves. All right. What on earth is going on here? What is Jesus trying to say? Anybody has a clue? Um, out on a limb here. <laughs> I noticed in, I think it's Mark, um, 
there was one of this and one of that mentioned but in the others it was pluralized which means one keep it at one no extra luggage no extra baggage just what you need for the journey yes so sister terry tip. yes sister terry you're getting there i love it i love it that's why i, I hinted at you all of you and i said read the details pay attention to the details carefully and what sister terry has said is coming right in anybody else has anything to add as we, for, for some people still i don't get it pastor yeah what terry said sounds like you're impressed by it, but what what i don't get it if you don't get it don't worry we'll clear it up in a moment but just checking anybody else have anything else to add all right nothing else to add all right yes so what we're gonna do first before we get into detail even explaining some more of what sister terry said I'm just going to do use two slides to simply put out what the real message is. And then we're going to look into details as to reconciling this. All right. So let, let's go, Pastor Evans. So if you are confused about this whole thing, you need to realize what the real message is. Uh, probably nothing more is meant than simply to state that they must not wait to make any provision for the journey, but go just as they were with what they had. Or what they had not in other words go with what you have and what you don't have leave it all right with or without a staff and leave the provision of their needs to god so if at if after we are done with this thing tonight and you're still a little confused which i hope and, and think you won't be this is a message behind the whole the three passages this is the lesson behind it nothing more is meant than simply to state that they must not wait to make any provision for the journey in fact let me add to this don't even try to go to the store to buy anything for this journey all right don't waste time don't spend money go with what you have all right with or without a staff because the staff is the real thing we're looking at and leave the provision of your needs to god all right next slide so the prohibition meaning in found in matthew and luke where he says don't take anything you know he prohibited them don't take anything including staves the prohibition was against securing these things before starting in other words he wanted them to not go and try and get stuff and say oh all right we're going on a journey let me go buy us a bag let me go get a purse let me go get two staves or whatever he, you know even even if it's one staff too he's saying no man i'm sending you out go with what you have so the prohibition was again securing the things before starting and at their own expense too because there are some people if they know that they're going on a journey they like to shop for it or, or borrow for it me not even have this i may not even have that and, and 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 i need to go on this journey so he, he all of that was no it is not that they would have no need for the articles mentioned because they're going to need bag traveling bag they're going to need different things but the laborer he says in verse 10 of matthew is worthy of his food and they were to depend on the people for whose benefit they labored to furnish what they needed that's the that's the crux of what this is all about he's saying to them jesus is saying to them i'm going to send you out on a journey i'm going to divide you into teams and i want you to leave with what you have and when you go there don't worry about provisions just go and there are people there that will provide for you those who don't provide for you those who don't hear you shake the dust off your feet and move on but you're not i'm not sending you out to suffer where i lead i will feed where i guide i will provide by the way that's a good little thing that's happening here that's what is coming out for us to apply to our very lives don't worry about a thing go go now go with what you have and when you go you're doing my bidding i promise you jesus is saying that you will not you will not you will not um starve <laughs> you will not die you will go and you'll be provided for that's the moral of this that's lesson all right that's a lesson here good yes sister terry go ahead yes 
I was going to say to a lot of time we read that passage and the reception, we usually think it's based on receiving the word of God. Yes. But if, if, if you, reception is receive me so yes. I can give you the word of God and in receiving me, provision will be made for me because yeah. it's, it's a whole package. Yeah. So more time we look at it as if you don't receive the word of, if they don't receive the word of God, shake your sandals off. But the reception is for the whole person. Yes. And providing for the person, catering yeah. for the person. Yes. Yes. Oh, all right. Let me let you my microphone. Um, I just want to look at it and it won't matter that I think Jesus wants him to depend upon him. And it's, it's a tricky situation that Jesus is leading them in a way that they have no excuse to go. Because when I think about it, they say, I might spend the next month to try to see me can buy one purse or get this and get that because we're going. They said, listen, I don't want you to get involved trying to get these things. You understand? Go and everything will be taken care of. So it's very interesting, you know, at times we tend even to look at our lives. We want to put things in place. And this we can learn from it. Just say, I say to you, go. And we are just to be obedient and go. And he will take care of everything. Well said, Deacon Clark. And this, by the way, is nothing new. This principle is nothing new. This has been happening from Old Testament time when God would have sent out his prophets. And remember Elijah and the widow at Zarephath. And he says, listen, you go have somebody prepared for you. And, and others, they went, I have a room prepared for you. I have a prepared hearts for you. So this is nothing new. The disciples would have read these Old Testament um, you know, portions to see how God provided for the prophets of old. And now he's sending them out and he says, just go and don't worry about a thing. Take what you have and the rest will be provided. In fact, I'll add to this because it's not mentioned in any of the slides. I'll add to this that one of the other reasons is that simply put, don't be bogged bug down with an unnecessary load. You understand? Because if so, so me, me, uh, you know, what is interesting, I have been on, a, on several trips with several people in several teams, in several dispensations, <laughs> and several ages. And it is interesting, depending, depending on which church, which people, which group, which age, there are people when they know they're going on a trip, they pack bag and pan. Am I making sense? And, and I've, I've, I've been on the Blue Mountain once. Uh, you know that whole trip a weekend and it is the idea that we were trained to not carry too much luggage and too much load with us I mean I went to the whole to the top of it all right several years ago when I was in my 20s with the church at Bethel and we were we we had weeks of training and preparation to say listen take only what you need because after a while the journey is going to be long and tiring and exhausting. And after a while, the very luggage, the necessities you have in there are going to become like a burden to you. So he says, don't take too many things because you don't need a bag and pan situation and then the burden and the journey is going to be too long. So therefore, I will have people provide for you. That's the lesson behind this. Yes, Brother Omar, take a mic and then we're going to continue. And I would like to add that that is still the lesson today that yes. God has for us. Yeah, I thought um, I was making that clear. That's the lesson. <laughs> yeah, it, that's it, what it, I was saying. It, but in, go terms ahead. Of, <laughs> in terms of life in general, yeah. uh, as you recall the incident with Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. and many of us have become bogged down with, with, with cumbersome things of life. And it is not that in and of themselves they are bad. But then we have missed the focus, especially for those of us who are Christians, because our real goal down here after we become saved, you know, is to spread the word. Yeah. So, so the job, the house, the family, the care, all of them other stuff there mm -hmm. are just by the side, you know, everything's mm -hmm. supposed to be geared around us ministering. Yeah. Our life is a ministry. Yeah. But people become back down with this, oh, we have to start our job, oh, family, oh, things mm -hmm. like that car house and we see the the results persons are dying because christians are more focused on possessions than people and and we are losing out in in regards to that yes. because we 
persons are thinking we need to have this in place before we can go which yeah. is what was happening in this case jesus never want them tarry waste time yeah. to try and get these things not that they're not important yes but he's saying i'm sending you and what you need when you need it when you really need it it will be provided amen. for you amen. it will be provided for Sir, you. amen i have yes I have, I oh just, yes i just thought about it but that was jesus's reality yes him never carrying a purse he yeah. never carrying that's how he lived yeah and he, wherever he goes well most time there was somebody to accept him and care for him yep so they would have already known that yep <laughs> yep yep and remember no no sister terry and the rest of you this was no this is like their first sending out doing no? early early ministries for them so even though some of them might have seen that they the one it's like you know you tell somebody to observe you and then when the time come for them to do it it's a different scenario they they, they, they weren't paying attention so now it's for them to do it and live out what jesus was doing as a pilgrim and and so their time had come all right so yes next slide pass evans to properly understand this prohibition meaning don't take anything with you to properly understand it we must remember that the disciples were to make a brief tour in a few weeks and that it was among their own countrymen remember that's why we read which one was matthew was more detailed he said you're not going to samaria you're not going to the uttermost parts of the world you're not ready for that yet and i want you to go to the last sheep in israel so this is neighborly all right so they were going to their own countrymen among a people habitually given to hospitality by the way so in other, in other there's so much coming out of this that i never saw so in another sense it's like jesus was wetting their feet first he didn't send them out in the deep with sharks he's saying go to your neighbors and so forth some of them you might even know when you get there oh paul Sorry, not Paul. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Pete, Paul never about the time they yet. Eh? Peter, is that you? Yeah, man. I'm about the large business. Oh, come in, man. Come in. Yeah, that's the idea. He never just threw them out into the deep for the sharks to eat them up. But he says, go to your own countrymen. I don't want you to go to Samir. And in fact, Samir, you know what may happen? It's like you're sending them around at ghetto. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, you know, you know where violence is. If he were to do that first with them, some of them would have said, "Me no go." This is too much. So he sends them in familiar territory among a people habitually given to hospitality. Moreover, the disciples were endowed with powers. You, you read that in the context, which would win for them the respect of the religious and the gratitude of the people that they helped and ministered unto. Because they're going to do some things, they're going to miracles and so forth. So some of these people are going to naturally, imagine if you go to somebody's house, a countryman's house, meaning not country, countryman, but you know, that's how we may say it, not sure, countryman. <laughs> if you went to another, our neighbor that down the road, and there was this person who was crippled for years, and, 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 and a Peter goes and peter says in the name of jesus be healed and this person is walking you know born crippled and no healed you imagine the, can you imagine the gratitude no man don't go yet let me feed you yeah here's some money so that's why i said don't take any money because everything they needed will be provided and some of it will just simply be out of gratitude for the people that have been healed and blessed and ministered unto amen all right so let's get to specifics now let's get to um resolving this whole thing so the custom pay attention to this now the custom during that era was that almost every traveler and and pilgrim carried a staff so even with matthew and luke saying don't take any staves when mark says that jesus says don't take anything except that staff this was really in keeping with the culture it was expected that they would take a staff with them he that had a staff can take it they did not need to provide or take more than one though take only the staff that each had already and sister terry got it quite she was right on the money with this one in mark 6 verse 8 he uses a singular term. He says, except a staff only. He says, don't take anything with you except a staff. Singular. 
But the other two portions, he says, don't take anything with you, nor staves, plural. Neither staves, plural. So in Mark, Mark was trying to highlight this cultural necessity. That was Mark's focus. And by the way, if you didn't notice, look at it again. Mark was narrating. Matthew and Luke were quoting Jesus. So what I'm trying to tell you is that Matthew and Luke says, Jesus, and they quoted Jesus, do not take anything with you on this journey. Neither stays, nor anything. Mark does not quote Jesus. He narrates. In, in other words, Mark is the only one that brought out the exception. Somebody look puzzled. Matthew and Luke did not bring out an exception. So if you read Matthew and Luke by itself, you would come away and say, when Jesus sent out the disciples, they didn't take anything with them, not even one staff. Uh, you, the tendency, if you're not careful, if you don't know that there's a mark that exists, you will misinterpret this. Am I making sense? So what Mark simply does is to say, he says that they mustn't take staves, but he says they could take one. Mark is the only one that brings out the exception. So next slide. Let me reiterate what I said next, in the next slide. In Mark, Jesus uses the singular term to say, take the one staff you already have. That's why he says, take nothing with you except a staff. In other words, I assume you already have a staff. So take nothing else with you except the staff. Because they're going to need a staff, by the way. They, it's the journey itself, the staff was, was used for different things, as you would know. It sometimes helps to kind of crutch you up. Or, or, not, that's not scratch. What am I saying? Um, prop! Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Prop you up. <laughs> prop you up. Um, sometimes if there's any dog in the way or whatever, you can't use it to protect yourself. All kind of stuff you can use a staff for. You're climbing a rock. You know the whole drill, eh? So it's a very useful tool. So... He was never prohibiting them from carrying a staff. He was definitely prohibiting them from carrying two or more. So in Matthew and Luke, Jesus uses plural terms to forbid the disciples from carrying extra supplies for future use. So in other words, Matthew and Luke can be read simply like this. Go with what you have. In fact, Mark could be the same thing. But the exception is that, you know, bring your staff with you. Go with what you have. Do not take two coats. Because you notice, as Sister Terry rightfully said, that in Mark it was singular. But then in Luke and, and Matthew, it was, he even used the word two. So in other words, go with the one clothing you have. Don't even bring a change of clothing. That's why they don't need a bag. Because there's nothing to put in it. Bring, put, bring your toothbrush, put your toothbrush in your belt. <laughs> in other words, just bring the necessaries. And even a toothbrush can be provided for everything you need. So don't keep on the clothes where you have, because you can't go naked. But don't pack an extra change of clothes. That's what he was saying. Do not take extra sandals. Go with the one pair of sandals you have. And do not take an extra staff. Do not take more than what you already have. Bear in mind, because you'll be provided for He's not sending them out on a wild goose chase to suffer. But he, as Mr. Clark rightfully said, wanted them to learn dependency upon him. Amen? It's like the going by faith. All right? And by the way, maybe it's the best kind because they wouldn't go bogged down with all kind of luggage. And after a while, the luggage gets a burdensome. All right? So any, anywhere they go, for instance, they don't need to carry their bed with them. Because as somebody else bed them sleep on and then move on. So they don't need to carry mattress. Am I making sense? Sleeping bag and all those things that would, you know. They don't need to pack to, to I mean, just making up some things here. I mean, then we know some never have sardine or, or bully beef back then. But we just attack the things them. <laughs> they never need to carry 10 tin or bully beef with them. Because that, after a while, they never need to carry bread with them which would actually get stale. Am I making sense? So is go and you'll get fresh bread fresh manna fresh produce from the people this was the key behind all of this 
Any questions, comments, art is satisfied. Good. So let's conclude. Let's conclude. Some of the disciples probably had staves. And some probably had not. It all depends. It all depends on where they were at that time. This was early ministry. So the probability exists that some had staves, staves sorry, and some didn't have any. To those who had, Jesus did not say that they should throw them away. As the instructions he was given in Mark allowed them to take their staff. So we are concluding everything and reconciling everything to say that in Mark, all Mark was doing is to say, take the staff you have. Take the one staff you have. But to those who did not have a staff, in Matthew and Luke, Jesus said that they should not spend time in procuring one or buying one or getting one. If you don't have one, go on. Or, if they did have one already, they were not to take two. So this covers everything in mark to those who had notice now we're going to read it in blue we can leave out the things in black to those who had he in mark allowed them to take their staff i did that deliberately so that you see what's going on in mark matthew and luke to those who had in the book of mark he allowed them to take their staff to those who did not have a staff in matthew and luke they should not spend time procuring one. Or if they had one already, then there was no need to take two. Simple. All right? Any questions, any comments? All right. Very good. So, as was said, we reiterate this one, time, one more time. The moral of this story and these passages for today is simply put, let us depend on Jesus. Let us first be totally obedient to what he tells us to do, where he sends us. And when he sends us, where he sends us, he will take care of the rest. Let us stop deliberating. Omar used that term and I'm going to know, putting it in a nice little sentence. Some, while others are dying, some Christians are delaying. Wow. While others are dying, some Christians are delaying. He wants us to be obedient. Don't try to put everything in place just go to the place he sends you and there you'll find provisions you see it in scripture all the time when jesus used his test of discipleship to say you want to follow me then here are some things you need to do one he says you know the other one says i'll go and bury my father first and then father said no let the dead bury the dead you know others you know let me go and say goodbye to my parents or to my family he said no you come you're not worthy this is what Jesus is saying. Who comes first in his life, in, in your life, sorry, in, in our life, is going to be determined by the obedient persons. Then you will know who is real priority. Is it Jesus? Or is it self? Is it family? Is it job? You name it. The priority will speak for itself when Jesus calls us to be obedient. Then we will know who really puts Jesus first. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. These seeming contradictions are very good for us to be able to reconcile, rectify, and so even learning from them so that we will see that indeed you are telling us some things. We thank you that we have a Bible that brings out all of these things and all we need to do is to study it properly to know it and in fact if we know it then some of these things will even um, just simply resolve themselves some of them will unravel themselves as we compare scripture with scripture may we use this series to be more diligent in our study of the word so that we don't just take especially when we have gospels and the kings and the chronicles stories that we don't just take first glance and leave it at that and we compare scripture with scripture to see all right is there more to be said about this issue for sometimes we think that all was said about the issue until we realize that these are not even contradictions but complementing the story in jesus name i pray 
Amen.